Truth snippet and the topic today is election. What is election? In the Greek, it's translated to picked out or chosen. One of my top five favorite verses in regards to this word is Ephesians 1 through 5, 4 through 5, and that reads, Even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purposes of his will. Now, the one point that I like about this in regards to election, this with dealing with this verse, Ephesians 1, 4 through 5, is even as, even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. So when we look at the second point of the tulip, which is unconditional election, we see that God elected us to faith before we existed. So that's why it's unconditional, simply because there were no conditions placed on his choosing of us because we did not exist yet. <clears throat> he loved us and he elected us out of that love. Now, we were chosen before we existed. And this is not to be confused with unconditional love. OK, that's one of the most unbiblical concepts. I've ever heard in my life. It's not only unbiblical, but it's demonic. And I hate whenever I hear people say this. I listen to a radio station, a Christian radio station um, called Family Radio. And honestly, I believe every Christian should be listening to this radio station when they're in their car. Here in Wisconsin, it's 88.1. You can go to familyradio.org and find the channel for um, your particular state. But they're extremely biblical. They have uh, uh, segments from Desiring God. They have John Piper, uh, R.C. Sproul from Ligonier. They have uh, John MacArthur speak on there as well. So it's it's highly biblical. But there is a man on there that speaks that he emphasizes on unconditional love a lot. And that's uh, he will be judged for that because that is not a biblical concept. Uh, God's love is conditional. That's why we're told to repent. And this whole notion of unconditional love the reason I say it's demonic is because if God's love is unconditional, what you're essentially saying to the sinner is God loves you just as you are. OK, and I was actually sitting in church one day uh, this was when I first got saved and I was in a Pentecostal church. And I remember the pastor saying to the congregation that God loves you no matter what. And I remember seeing there was two homosexual boys that were two rows up from me. And I'll never forget years later, thinking back on that day. And saying to myself, when they heard that, what they heard was, God is saying, it's okay that I'm gay, that I'm living with my boyfriend, because he loves me no matter what. So you've basically just condemned people to hell through that false, heretical view of God's love. And you will be judged for that. There are conditions on God's love. But let's get back to election. And to those people who do not like the doctrine of election, not only is that foolish, okay, because election speaks to you if you are indeed a Christian, okay? You were chosen, you were picked out. That should not only humble you, but bring a great joy to your heart that God chose you before the foundations of the world, okay? And it's, here, here's the thing. I once had a guy ask me uh, over the phone years ago, okay, well, why did God choose you? I said, that's not for me to know why God chose me. If it were for me to know, I would know it because he would have placed it in his word. It's not for us to know why. It's not for us to know everything about the way God's mind operates. It's for us to humble ourselves, to accept it, and to find joy in it. Because if you are indeed a Christian, it speaks to you. Okay? And here's one phrase that I've used that has brought me so much joy over the years. It is, he didn't have to. I have a small wooden plaque and it says he didn't have to. That sits right on this table. And every, and every day I look at it. He didn't have to. He didn't have to choose me. He could have chosen my neighbor. I could still be on the broad way. I could still be dead in my sins. Just a wicked monster as I was. Doing drugs, fornicating, abusing women. And I would have not known. See, this is the, this is the amazing thing about this. People that are lost don't know they're lost. They don't know. They have no idea. I've shared the gospel with people and they look at me like I'm a fool. They look at me like I'm crazy. Like, oh, boy, go, boy, go sit down. They look at me like I'm just a, just a, boy, go. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> I just, what? And they look at me like I'm just a fool. Like I'm just a young man that just, uh, yeah, okay, boy, whatever, whatever. They have no idea. And I would have had no idea had God not pulled me. John 6, 44, no one comes to Christ unless God draws them. Okay, so we need to understand 
He didn't have to. Allow that to humble you every day, okay? Allow that phrase to humble you. Just imagine, to those of you that are truly in Christ, if God hadn't chosen you, what would your life look like if you were still in the world? So election is, it's an amazing concept. Uh, it's something that, it, it, it's, a, it's a fearful thing. It, it is indeed a fearful thing. And we're not talking about hyper Calvinism in regards to election and that we don't preach because, oh, God chose who he chose. Okay, that we don't seek to save the lost through the gospel. But when you understand it biblically, okay, it is something that should bring great joy to your heart and it should increase your, 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 I guess I could say your loyalty to the Lord. Okay, he chose me and he didn't have to. So therefore, dying for him is not that bad. That, that's an honor. That would be an honor. And I'm not saying that if I were faced in that situation that I would be able to do it boldly, but it is a desire of mine that if I were faced with a gun in my face, um, that I would be able to die to the glory of God because he chose me and he didn't have to. So that is election.